Hey friends, it's Jessie and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very exciting, I think fourth update for my project A to Z project pan. This is being crazy. Like I said, today is a very exciting update. I have, I think three pans to share. It's been a very successful month. So let's go ahead and jump in. Last update, I believe we had two pans to share, but this update we have three. So we're really making our way through these shades. Bruce is being so distracting. I'm so sorry if you hear him being crazy. I swear, he was like literally so quiet and tired. So I was like, I'm gonna film my update and now he's crazy. I did wanna ask all you friends before I jump too far into this video on how you want me to handle this project. So the ultimate goal of this project is to hit a pan for every letter of the alphabet A through Z. I am currently through letter J and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to hit pan on all the rest of the letters by the end of the year. So I did wanna check in and see what you guys are thinking for next year. I do want to continue this project, but I'm trying to decide if I want to refresh it at the start of the year or if I just want to make this a continuous rolling A to Z project pan. Let me know which you would prefer. I'm leaning more towards the rolling project pan, but I did want to get all of your guys' input before I commit to anything. Let's go ahead and get into the progress. So for the first letter that I have today, we have the letter A, which comes from my Natasha Denona retro palette. And the shade I've been working on is Andy. Andy is this top shade right here. It's a cream to powder mauve shade. And as you can see, I did manage to hit pan in that shade. I used Andy an additional five times since last update for a grand total of 11 uses to hit pan. It was fairly easy to pan because it is that cream to powder formula and it's very crumbly. There are a couple of those in here. It's one of her more common formulas. Natasha Nona shades usually take me a while to pan. So to be able to hit pan in 11 uses, I'm very excited about that. I'm not using Andy today. Today I'm actually using the Pat McGrath and Bridgerton palette, but when I did use Andy, I used it in a very similar way. I would do these more cool tone mauve looks and I would just use it as a crease shade. I actually used it on a pretty dense packing brush because it is that cream to powder formula and then I would dip it, pack it, and then blend it. And I think that's how I was able to hit pan so quickly, but it is a very pretty shade. I'm very happy to have a pan in this palette. This is definitely one of my more loved Natasha Denona palettes. The next shade I have to share is letter E, which comes from my ColourPop She's Got Solstice palette. And the shade I've been working on is Estrella, which is this middle rose gold pink shade. I used Estrella eight times since last update for a grand total of 17 uses. And as you can see, I did a hit pan in Estrella. This was one that I honestly didn't think I was going to hit pan on. I knew I was close, but I thought it was going to take me a little bit longer. I know that the ColourPop shimmer shades can be pretty hit or miss on how densely pressed they are. But when I tell you I've really tried to crank this shade out, I'm trying to get some of those pinky shades out of my project so that way I can start focusing on more fall-esque shades. But I'm very happy to have pan in this. I used it primarily as a lid shade and actually the last few times I used it, I not only used it on the lid, but I also put it on a dense smudger and then smoked it on my lower lash line as well. And that was how I was able to concentrate a little bit on that pan. There is a pretty large dip overall in that shadow. I don't feel like there's any part of that shade that's not really dipping down a ton, but I'm very happy to have pan in this. The next letter we have in the current rotation is letter F, which comes from my ColourPop All Amethyst palette. And the shade I've been working on is Feb's Gem, which is this matte purpley lilac shade right here. I used Feb's Gem three times since last update for a grand total of eight uses in the project so far. I haven't made a ton of progress on this one. It's a pretty densely pressed shade, so there isn't a ton of wear and tear on this shade, but I am hoping to continue to get some more use out of it. I'm honestly not sure if I'm gonna be able to hit pan on this one by the end of the year. I'm just not using a ton of purpley shades right now. In my Pan Those Eyeshadows project, I'm doing a lot of grungy tones and purple just doesn't fit in with that very well. So I'm trying my hardest, but we haven't made a ton of progress. I did use this one with Andy a couple times. They are very similar, but I was able to put Andy from the retro palette down and then put Feb's Gym over it to create more of a purpley mauve look. But I don't really have much to say on this shade other than that. The next shadow I have is letter H, which comes from my Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe palette. And this one was a complete surprise pan. 
I just spoiled it. I wasn't going to tell you I had pan, but I have pan in Hoya Bashu Castle. I did look it up this morning to make sure I was going to pronounce it right this time because I feel like in all of my updates, I haven't pronounced it correctly, but I did hit a little pan in there. When I hit pan on the shadow, I actually couldn't tell that I hit pan on it because the shadow itself is very similar in color to the pan. So I did use it an additional time. I don't think I recorded that, but I used Hoya Bashu 10 times this month for a grand total of 23 uses to pan. Like I said, I have used it a couple more times just to actually make sure there is pan in there, but there is, and I'm very pleased I was able to hit pan on these. These are actually a lot more shallow than I thought they would be. This one was a complete surprise pan though. I did actually hit pan on Estrella and Hoya Bashu on the same day in the same look, and I was shocked. I was like, there's no way. Like, that didn't actually happen, but it did. I've used Hoya Bashu primarily as an inner corner highlight. I've been using it on pencil brushes, which is why if you look at the pan, it is just in that one little spot. I haven't really been using any other brushes, but I'm very excited. It is bittersweet because this palette was discontinued, but I am happy to have more pan in my collection and it's definitely inspired me to play around with this palette some more. I also wanted to make a point to tell all of you because I am a Swifty at heart, and when Midnight's came out, I actually recreated the makeup look for the Midnight's cover using this palette. So I used Hoya Bashu as my inner corner, and then I used these two shades right here, as well as I believe this gray at the bottom, the catacombs. But it was a very pretty look. I am very happy with how it turned out, and I'm happy to have another pan. This was, I believe, my 28th pan in my collection. From here on out, I don't have any more pans to share, as I've already shared all three of my pans, but I do want to share the rest of my progress. So the letter I comes from my Riviera palette by ABH and the shade I've been working on is Inheritance, which is this yellow shimmer right here. We rolled this one in last update and I have used Inheritance seven times, so seven times total in the project and it is not looking super loved. I do have a little teeny baby pan in Seychelles over here. Inheritance has actually been pretty easy to work into looks. I'm currently working on panning a green shadow in my pan those eyeshadows and I'll do a green matte in the crease with like a green shimmer on the lid. And then I'll just pop inheritance right on top in the middle to do kind of like a halo eye effect. And that seems to be working pretty well. I do want to try and do an all yellow look and also another candy corn look for November. I know we're kind of out of Halloween now, but your girl loves Halloween. So that is inheritance so far, nothing super crazy notable. And because we hit three pans, we get to roll in three shades. And honestly, I hit pan on Andy very quickly after my last update. So I did already roll in letter J. I didn't roll it in in my last update, but I've rolled it in unofficially. So I do have some progress to share on letter J. For letter J, I am working out of my Marc Jacobs Terrific palette. Marc Jacobs as a brand is no longer a thing. And honestly, I hate this palette. So I wanted to try and get some use out of it. So for the letter J, I've chosen this white shimmery shade called Juicy. It is very similar to Tempura from like the Soft Glam, the Modern Renaissance. And I have used it 10 times since rolling it in. I have used this as just a brow bone highlight, just right up in the corner up here underneath my brow bone. And that is how I've used it. It is a pretty easy shade to work through. If you look at the progress pictures, I have made quite a little bit of wear on this shade already but I don't know if I'll have panned by next update. I'm hoping I do because I want to keep working through the project, but it should be a pretty easy one to hit pan on. So we have two more letters to roll in. We are going to be rolling in K and L. For letter K, I have chosen to work out of my Luminous Cosmetics with Sir John Lion King palette, and the shade I have chosen is King, which is, this is so reflective, I'm so sorry. King is this warm matte neutral right here. I'm very excited about this one. I haven't gotten a ton of use out of this palette, and it's one that I've been meaning to pull out again. That swatch looks terrible. I can never do live swatches. But I think this palette will be a very fun one to work on. I definitely think it'll take me a hot second to hit pan, but considering how many pans we've hit so far, I am not opposed to having more of a long haul shade because a lot of these I have worked through so quickly, but that is king. And for letter L, I've decided to work out of my Kylie Jenner Nice palette, and the shade I have chosen is Lullaby. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but every single shade I have chosen for this project, I've chosen out of different palettes. 
I'm trying to hit pan in as many different palettes as possible and I'm trying to work for my older ones first. So Lullaby is just this really light tan shade. I feel like it'll make a very easy transition, especially with King and with fall warm neutral looks. I feel like I'll be able to hit pan on it pretty, pretty quickly, maybe not in one month, but possibly two. I am very excited to pull this palette out as well. This is one of my favorite color stories from Kylie Cosmetics. So it'll be fun to play with that palette as well. Here is our final color story. Pardon that really awful brown swatch. But thank you guys so much for joining me for this project. Remember to let me know how you want me to continue this project, whether a complete refresh or just a continuous rolling project pan. I would love to know your guys' thoughts and what you would prefer. I hope you guys have a lovely day wherever you are, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, friends!